Hi, I just uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about what is going to be one of the most significant projects in Prince Rupert's history and give you some context for that. I don't know that the last council would agree with me, but by far and away, the biggest thing that they did for this community was the replacement work they did on the Woodworth Dam and all of the water flow piece from there. Because um, quite frankly, a community without water is an unlivable community. You, you simply can't live in Prince Rupert if there's not water. And we've come dangerously close over the last year and even in the last few weeks to being without water. Um, it's of great concern to council and staff and, and we've had people working around the clock to make sure that you don't lose water. Uh, and we have a plan that will secure it for the future. The last council spent tens of millions of dollars or, and attracted that in government funds. We're chasing hundreds of millions of dollars to continue on the work that they started. And, and to give you some context for that, I, I had this just the other day, I, I grabbed one of our key staff people here and I brought him in and I said, you gotta draw this out for me. I need to understand this. And when we were done, I said, you know what? I, I think the community needs to understand it. This could be a little bit long, I apologize for that right in advance, but given all we're going through, given that it's tens of millions of dollars of your tax money, given that there's going to be a lot of interruption over the next three years, uh, I just thought it was best that you get as best an understanding as you can get of, of what's going to take place. So to help us do that, I want to introduce to you the uh, Director of uh, Operations and Intergovernment Affairs, uh, Richard Pucci. And the reason he carries both those titles uh, is that not only does he look after the pipes, but he has the connections and contacts to raise the money to look after the pipes even further. And we'll talk a little bit about money uh, towards the end. But I wanted Richard to kind of walk over the system as it exists today, tell you a little bit about what's been done to upgrade it, and, uh, and then all of what we plan to do with the rest of the money. So Richard, uh, you've got the, uh, the uh, dry erase pen, pens there, go crazy. Tell us how the system works today. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the city of Prince Rupert is quite special and unique because we have a gravity feed system. So we are able to take water from Woodworth Lake, which is at an elevation, and bring it over to Montreal Circle, which is at a similar elevation. This is a self-leveling system, and the pipes go down and feed each other. We also have a secondary piece that is on Shawatlan Lake that is able to be pumped. So what happens is- So, sorry, before you go further, I wanna get real clarity. For, you know, we have people probably listening that are relatively new to Rupert. This body of water separates our island, Cane Island, from from the mainland. The mainland, which yes. also makes us unique, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. yeah. So we have a subsea line which you're going to get to. Correct. But yes. this is all on the mainland. This is all on the mainland. It's only accessible by boat. There is uh, no ability to walk there. You have to go over by boat. Then we have a road that takes us up to the dam that was newly constructed a few years ago. But before that, the only way you could get up there was by helicopter or by ATV and, uh, and by, by foot. Uh, which uh, that was how the people for the last hundred years actually accessed uh, that, that, uh, that piece of infrastructure. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay, so we have the dam that's at an elevation and we have a pipe that comes down on a service road and it comes along the base of the lake, goes over to uh, past the lake and then it splits into two lines. There are, there's one line that goes along the shore and one line that goes over a hill. These are of two separate vintages and one is older than the other. The older one is the, uh, is the one that goes over the hill and the younger one goes along the shore. Once it reaches the shore to a point here, there are actually two crossings that go down under the passage and come back up uh, at Shawatlan Road. There's two spots where they come up. One comes up uh, across from the O'Brien's yard and one comes up uh, right next to Wainwright. In the industrial and they're Both in the industrial site. After that, these both go along Shawatlan Road and go up Frederick, 
through our booster station where they connect and then a single pipe goes up and feeds our reservoir. So, and, and we put it here, a lot of people wouldn't recognize what Montreal Circle is, mm -hmm. but it's on the old map, but it's actually within Crestview. So there's Crestview and Montreal Circle, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. So we have two tanks in there. Uh, each are uh, 0.5 of megaliter, so we have uh, one megaliter worth of storage there. And that's about two to three days worth of storage uh, for an average use case. Okay. Um, what I wanted to explain is what we've done in the last five years uh, for a new infrastructure and the, the commitment that the province has made with us. We have replaced the 100-year dam that is up at Woodward. This dam uh, was originally constructed in about 1914 to 1916. There was a pipeline that came down that you had to basically walk beside for a certain section and then turned into a road. Uh, and then from the road, it goes down to a point here. So this is all brand new within five years. Cost of this is approximately 28 million, approximately 7 million here. We were able- And that was most, uh, that was provincial grants. Correct, most of it was through most provincial grants and legacy. Yeah. Uh, in this section here was completed in 1995. So it's relatively new and in uh, good working order with newer materials and, uh, and we inspect that quite often. The pump station uh, prior to doing this work was completed. We got two new pumps uh, and we have two pumps in there and a standby generator. When this started, we knew that we would be off gravity feed. So for the past approximately three and a half to four years, we have been pumping from Shawatlin Lake and you will see a difference in the water in the past, I would say several months to the past couple of years because we were we had switched on to our Woodworth feed, which is a clear, cleaner water. The reason why this is a little bit more uh, darker is because there is a creek that runs in that uh, creates sediment issues in here. And then when we pick it up by pumps, it, uh, it comes and so, translates into that. So you're, the only reason you're using the pump is to get it out of Shawatma. Correct. Right? Because that, that's high enough at gravity feeds. Correct. Um, what's that cost to run that pump station? Uh, when we're running at full capacity, it runs between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars a month a to run that in hydro. Oh wow! Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, from this point here, it runs into our chlorine then, yeah, room. Perfect. Runs in, runs out. We have uh, chlorine gas injection, and this is all monitored uh, through a system called SCADA, and I think that the community will know that we are uh, looking at building, or not looking, we've been approved to build a new SCADA tower uh, right here this year, and that will directly feed into this system so that we can have better communications. Uh, the cost of this is about $1.2 million. This one, and there's one over here as well. Okay. And those allow line of sight communication so that in uh, uh, unfair conditions, we don't necessarily have to go over and check on things. We can check on all of it electronically. So, and we, we chlorinate, but we don't add fluoride. We do not, no. Right, okay. This part here uh, is still, uh, this was done in 1995. This was done in the late 80s. So this is, uh, has been left for now. We will get to that in the future. We are picking up about right in this area here and we have designed what's called the overland section, which is replacing this line that goes over. This is the older line. This one will stay in and be a redundant line. And this is uh, out for RFP right now, and we are looking to construct that next year. And that was funded by previous grants? Or is Correct. that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. That is funded by previous grants, so that money is all with us. Yep. And then we are also replacing one of these lines that comes down, that comes up across from the O'Briens. This again was part of this larger um, um, placement of money with the province of British Columbia. Roughly how much? Uh, the grant was 19 million on a $29 million building. So $29 million does that? Correct, yes. 19. 29 million did this, so this, and water treatment. 
Oh, in the water treatment. treatment. Yes. Yeah. Which we'll talk about. We'll talk about in a bit. That. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So that takes us to the shore. That takes us to uh, Shawatlin Road shore, where we have significant right. valving, and then from Shawatlin. Uh, through the infrastructure replacement strategy, we are looking to replace that uh, next. So from here up to the booster, and then the Crestview section, which is getting worked on right now, is yeah. part of the infrastructure replacement strategy. Yeah. So that money is separate from this money, but still supported with the province of British Columbia. Right. And the booster station um, doesn't operate very frequently, but it historically was there when we had all the canneries. So you would have a huge draw on the system, which is really just done by equilibrium. But when there was large pulls in the summer for these nine canneries that were along the waterfront, that had to assist to pull more water, keep these at a certain operating level so that it could feed the community. Yeah. And it is only used when we're looking, when we're dropping down to refill. Okay. Treatment, where will that go? Treatment is, slated to go up here at Montreal Circle. Okay. Um, that is, uh, we are working with the province of British Columbia right now that has money associated with it in this grant, but we have paused that due to getting our distribution right. in hand. We are finding that we are losing a significant amount of water and uh, because of just breaks and cracks in pipes, and what is, what's happening is it's just going into the ground. And once you start doing sophisticated and expensive treatment, every cubic meter of water that goes out of that has a dollar value associated with it. It's not just sort of free with right. gravity anymore. This is, has a significant cost, has operators, and there is a value on every cubic meter that comes out. So if we're losing it to the ground, we're absolutely losing money. Plus, when we do studies on how much draw we have on this, we feel that we're probably about 60% of what the actual today's draw is. After the work will be done, we think that will be 60% less, or sorry, 40% less because of all the cracks will be, you know, removed. Lots and, and lots of micro cracks Correct. in the yeah. whole system, water just disappearing. Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So water treatment on hold. Yes. Right? I think that's... Uh, Still on the books, still planned, it is. but for the people that have been really eager to see it, uh, it's on hold. Correct. And we've worked with the province. They're fully aware that this is our plan. We're looking at 2027 as the design year, 2028 installation. Yeah. That will give us enough time to complete our asset renewal strategy within the community for the distribution system and then move forward with the, with the proper size treatment facility. Okay. okay. So that's already a lot to take in. We got a lot more to do here, right? Okay, I want to make sure people understand that. Um, but before we keep going, our water coming out of Woodworth right now is probably as good, clean, clear water as we've had in a decade or more. Correct, yeah, we're, we're seeing, we're looking at historic data and we're seeing that um, it's some of the best water we've seen in between 15 and 20 years. And yet. Yeah. We're on boiled water advisories, mm -hmm. you know, water advice, whatever. I know we're going to talk about the pipes, mm -hmm. and, and, but why, if the water's so good, why are we boiling water we're, we're, from time to time? Uh, we're currently on boiled water advisory due to, due to construction, mostly. Yeah. Um, when you have to replace pipes more than a repair, when you have to open it up and open the system up, um, you know, there is a potential that particulates and, and bad things can get into the water. So it is an absolute precautionary measure that we go and we, okay. we put boil waters on. Yeah. We've also decided in for, for the time being here, while we have a lot of open holes and a lot of repairs going on, especially in the last couple of weeks, that we've decided to keep it on, even though we could have taken it off, put it, put it back on right. and vice versa. So we've just decided to do that just so that it's, it's for the community's right. best interest. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, where, where do you want to go next? Do you want to talk about this part of the distribution? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, And then we'll talk about broken pipes. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. So um, once it gets to this piece here, we have two ways for water to move. We have one that can go down Frederick Street and the other goes in into the um, reservoirs and then out. 
with this pipe being worked on right now, we have that's that's the Crestview Crestview Crestu pipe right now. Is so that's the act, uh, there's an active break there. Correct. Well, and, and, and it's an been repaired, repair, but and yeah, we, we believe it. It'll be two to three weeks before it okay. is uh, it's back operational. Yeah, we have water being pushed in and and pulled in a way that it is not used to, and again, these pipes are mostly you know, 100 years old, more in some instances, or have significant break history associated with them. So any more stress that's put on, put on them, or even when flow changes in a pipe, you can, you can feel that in that pipe, and these micro fractures can expand and become larger, larger um, breaks. So that's what we've seen. This is Frederick Street right here. And from Frederick Street, it feeds into areas like 11th, and then up to seven. We have seen two pretty significant breaks here on Frederick, and we've now seen three pretty significant breaks on seventh. So seventh, we basically made the repair. A day later, it broke five feet away. Made another repair, and two days later, uh, broke again about 15 feet away. Eleventh, okay. we made the repair here. It's held, but when we made the repair, it was literally right on the other side of a 2022 break. So How many over, homes are behind this? We we estimate about 1,050. Okay. So 1,050 households yeah. are affected by by this one pipe here. Yeah. Okay. Teams have been working literally around the clock yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. and uh, incurring you know lots of overtime. And we've brought in three con three contractors to assist, and they've been. Uh, keeping it so that uh, we've not gone really a full day without fodder. Yeah. We've been able to. Yeah, to it's been amazing. On. It's been amazing. It's one of the reasons I want to do this mm -hmm. is, is, you know, you guys are doing work in the middle of the night on weekends and, and contractors are in and they've been doing a great job. Nobody sees it, mm -hmm. right? Back up a little bit. I, I, you can talk about the distribution in a, in a moment, but why I think this is critical is all of this is pre-reservoir, correct? right? Yeah. That's what makes us nervous, mm -hmm. probably more than anything else, is if we can get it to the reservoir, at least we own it on this side, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so talk to me about the breaks that have been happening yeah. out there as well. Absolutely, so um, we've also had, we also have a pretty significant break right here, and we've had two breaks right here. Um, e e these breaks here are are due, we believe, uh, sorry, no, not on that line, it's actually right on, it's on this line here. Yeah. Th this one here is uh, is on the 1995 line and we believe it's uh, their, their pressure, um, pressure release valves and they were um, pressure fittings and not screw fittings and we believe that the new, some of the new pressure from the dam and some of the different movements affected them and blew that off. And then we also had another break there. This pipe here, we believe is fixed and is under control. This one here is a different story. This one here is is quite old. We, we, and, and it's it slated has, for replacement. We haven't got to it. Yet. We haven't got to it yeah. yet. It's yeah. in an area on this slope where there is no road. We have to walk an excavator up to it. And it's in an area that uh, there is a joint between several uh, in, in, a, in a curved piece of pipe that was uh, encased in concrete and the bottom of the concrete has blown out and we have water going to ground there. Yeah. Uh, we are watching it very closely and we will be there within a day blazing road up to it to be able to do that yeah. replacement with the coupling. Unfortunately, again, this, this repair here fully lost money as this will be replaced right. next year. So, right. you know, order of magnitude, 150 to $200,000 to do gone. that. Gone. Just gone. gone. Yeah, correct. And, yeah. and same with yeah. same with these in here are, you know, we, we estimate that in the past two weeks, we've uh, spent about $500,000 on repairs and, and most of that will be lost, lost money. Lost money. And, 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 and so, the, I mean, that's the driver right behind, not only the deep concern about losing water, mm -hmm. but the fact that this is a budget killer, right? Like this is the most inefficient way mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. to do this kind of work. Right, Absolutely. overtime, nighttime, 
Yeah, but I mean, we, we have a commitment to keep fire protection and keep the, the yeah. water in the homes. So yeah. at some point, we just have to yeah. just keep going forward. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Good. Do you do you want to um, do you want to talk about the rest of the sure. distribution quickly, and then let's talk about what we're going to do. Sure. So um, when this pipe is actually uh, in place, we have a properly operating system that runs from uh, Woodworth to here to gravity. We have you know enough water, and then it moves throughout the system. Typically, what happens is it gets to the Montreal Circle reservoirs. This feeds the east side. This goes down, feeds the west side. Oh, I'm, I don't know if we've got another red. Or, no, switch colors. I'll, I'll switch colors to black. So we've got we've got this, and then there's also a part down here that that feeds to west as well. Yeah. Um, think of it like a circulatory system where these are your main arteries coming into your heart. We have uh, a couple that that. Or sorry, large veins come in, we have a couple arteries that come out, then they sort of spider out and feed the entire system. Uh, these, the larger pipes that feed are larger, and then as you go down to smaller, as you get into smaller areas of town, they get smaller and smaller as you don't require as much water. Yeah. You want to size a pipe for the area of need and the amount of houses because oversized pipes carry too much water and water has a has sort of a shelf life right. and can get stale so right. uh, the way the system works is that we've got this network that slowly gets smaller and smaller as it goes out to those areas. That's one of the reasons uh, as I understand it you're cranking fire hydrants at the end of 2nd Avenue right because there used to be fish plants sucking that Correct. water. That's right. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah that's right and and so we have to think about water treatment is that the more water we produce out of that facility yeah. you know every cubic meter costs money and it could just go into these pipes and die and then it's lost money that we, right. we, we put out. so okay. during the whole exercise we look at we always look at sizing to make sure that we have the you know the right size for for the amount of use yeah. in the area yeah. yeah okay what happens here so after this it, it goes down and basically goes globe goes into the system throughout throughout the system we have newer areas of town and we have older areas of town so depending on that on that area will depend on what type of pipe it is the uh the type of material and size for instance the area that's just outside of montreal circle you get into the principal boulevard area those are relatively new of uh, made of, of proper materials and those areas aren't slated for um for replacement but as you get down into the areas down lower past conrad onto the the seventh eighths sixes tenths those areas, those are older areas yep. of town. They they still have a lot of those areas still have original piping, yep. pre-war, um, getting up some over 100 and some getting up to 100 years old. And those are the types of pipe that have just really, they've hit their life cycle. They are now at the point where they are starting to just fatigue and break. Yeah. So as I recall, we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 kilometers of distribution pipe in the community. Is that a... Yeah, yeah. Between 75 and 80 is, okay. is really so, what, what that number is, yeah. And the project that's going to solve a lot of this mm -hmm. identifies 26.3 kilometers Correct. of super high-risk pipe. Correct, yes. Right? Likely to fail. Yes. And catastrophic if it fails, right? Yes. So that's about a third of our entire water distribution system. Yeah, and, and correct. And, and you know, it, it is scary, but it's true. I mean, we went through an extensive exercise with consultants and yeah. we looked at break history, age, and and uh, type of material. And, you know, there's a matrix that, that these things go into. And, and uh, it was quite apparent that pretty much all of that is beyond any expected uh, yeah. life cycle. Yeah, and, and it's a and risk. It is, it is a risk. You and know, I started right. off by saying a community without water is not a livable community. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can bring in some potable water for short-term emergency, but if you can't do all the sanitary stuff, flush toilets, shower, wash your kids, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't live here, right? Correct, yeah. You just, you can't live here. So this is like mission critical. Correct, and, and planned replacement versus emergency replacement are two different things. Right. So right. if we're in a situation where we have 1,050 homes approximately that are without water because we have a severed line here, um, and we can't repair it in one day, two days, 10 days, two yep. weeks, we're, we're in some real real problems, or we have some real problems. So yep. 
looking at these, when we did this repair, for instance, we talked to our team, we had a really good debrief, and we said, listen, um, number one is to make sure that by morning, everyone has home. No one's gonna be, a, sorry, everyone has water. Yeah. No one's gonna be a hero here if you can get the clamp on, even if it's leaking a bit. We can always come back to it the next night. It's yeah. about people waking up with water in the morning and, and yeah. ensuring that fire protection Being is able still able to bathe their baby, right? Yeah. yeah, and we can always go back, we yeah. can take out another section of pipe, we can repair it again, but uh, long-term um, times without water is just what we're, we're really yeah. trying to avoid it, yeah. all of that. Yeah. So, and I, the other day you were telling me about reverse flows. And I, I'm not going to make you go into that, but you know, basically the tricks you guys have to do to keep, you know, yeah. when a section goes down, you 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 are reversing flow in another section I, and yeah. keeping us rolling. I we won't spend a lot of time. Yeah, on that, I think but. just one of the main things to just really easy to say on that is that for a hundred years, water has been moving through this system yeah. in a certain way. Yeah, it's comfortable with that. Right, it's made its way through. The pipe right. is comfortable with whatever water. little things are clinging in there yeah. they're used to the water coming this yeah. way exactly so we start changing that that flow and that comfortability and also putting you know two times with this gone right this used to be split so now not only is the because you're running side, water back in yes, this way somehow yes yeah. exactly this is coming back in and then feeding out so yeah. your your pulling more water through it, this pipe isn't going to be comfortable with that because it is so old, it is so fatigued, yeah. you are going to have breaks. And that's exactly what happened that's on Fred, Fred right. Street, right. is that it wasn't comfortable with that and it, it showed us so really quickly. So th that map with the high risk pipes, it's mm -hmm. been publicized, but it, people can get a hold of it anytime they want it. It's on the web. Like there's ways for people to see. Mm -hmm. um, when we are doing that work, so let's start, let's spend just a, a couple minutes talking about the work, the big project, three years, if we can get all the money we want mm -hmm. uh, that we're chasing, um, you know, what we're going to do ideally is we're going to go into the ground, tear up those streets, mm -hmm. put in new water pipe, but do the sewers at the same time, repair the road, put it back so we don't have to come back and do that again, right? Correct, yeah. So um, I call it the full ticket price is $205 okay. million. Dollars. How much? 205. 205. 205 is the full ticket price. And that includes um, water, sewer, and storm separation. So m most of these areas that we're talking about are older areas of town. And most of these areas still have combined sewers and storms. Yeah. And so that's just one pipe that takes both your, it takes the catch basin that's on the street and it takes the, yeah. the the effluent from the home so that isn't common anymore it hasn't been common for yeah. decades yeah. uh so the proper way to deal with that is to be, have them separated we also have a mandate from the federal government to do that so what we're doing is while we're in these streets yeah uh we are going to do more work which is to take unfortunately take the entire street up but fortunately get it rebuilt at the same time yeah. so these streets uh, these 26 kilometers will likely get full new water services to the home or services sorry to the property, to the property line, line to the property line not not to the home and then new storm and uh, and sanitary lines and then um, all those also to the property line uh, so that they can rehook up and uh, and then if there's any improvements that can be made on the streets yeah. as we go through for active transportation or for curb letdowns and you know sidewalks and parking we will look at those as we go through yeah. uh, some are shorter sections that likely will just be put back the exact same way that yeah. that, that we went in with and but just new and then some that are longer um, we will look at, at bringing in possibly bike lanes or, or bump outs for uh, buses for transit mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, maybe looking at additional parking okay. and, and let down. So 205 million, I think right. it's also worth pointing out that that's three years, right? Correct. We to, to do this work. Correct. Like this is not one winter, one summer, it's a long time. Correct. Right? Yeah. So we've got 65 million right out. Oops. 65 million right out of the gate, right? Correct, yes, from the province of British Columbia. That came from the province, from the Premier, uh, the work that the previous council did, the work that you did, the work that we've done subsequently. Mm -hmm. The Premier's alive to this whole issue, understands that it, it, the terminals, mm -hmm. you know, Canada's third largest port, aren't gonna be very 
easy to operate if there's nobody that can live here, right? Mm -hmm. So that story has been well told. 65 million you've got. You are chasing the feds for the maximum they'll fund. Correct, yes. On a $205 million project, which is 40%, mm -hmm. which is how much? It's, it's around 80 to 85 million in that range there. Okay, yeah. Can I say 82? 82, sure. Yeah. Just, just for the sake of my, I'm running out here. So 82, that leaves 58, right? right? 58 million. So don't know when people are watching this, don't know what's coming, but, mm -hmm. but council has, are seeking permission from the community for two chunks of borrowing, right? Yes. So five, what's that for? Five is for overall design and project management of all of this. So all of this needs to be engineered, designed, and uh, so that we can have yep. detailed design to put it back in the ground. Right size pipe, Correct. all yes. that stuff. And also 40 million. 40 right. million is for a significant share towards the sewer and storm separation. Okay. So 65 of the 82 goes to match the okay. 65 and then the remainder goes to match on this to complete the remainder okay. of the sewer separation. So 45, 58, 13 million still to explain. Correct. So explain, <laughs> explain 13 million to me. The 13 million right now, uh, we, okay. The, Your writing's probably better than mine. Okay. So. Uh, the, the, the remainder of the 13 million, um, we are seeking uh, smaller grants for that. So there's smaller grants. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that leaves us with uh, about six, four to five million after the smaller grants. And we're looking at that uh, for the, um, the grant. Now I forget what that grant is called. Oh, the uh, Growing, Growing Communities. The Growing Communities grant, yes. Yeah, yeah, which is money we've already been granted, right. which I'd rather not use there, but if we have to use it there, we'll use it there, right? Yeah, I mean, some of it is allowed to be unfunded, so we have to actually put how we're going to fund it, and then yeah. once we are... Uh, for for the 82. For the 82, once yeah. we're approved, yeah. we're allowed to yeah. move money around a little bit, yeah. so if we're able to get uh, different amounts of money here yeah. through smaller grants, then we can put this back yeah. into the into the bucket yeah. for other other. Now, you know, in setting up this borrowing, this is this is on the utility. If we are unable to get any other sources of revenue, right? correct? Yes. So that's what when people read in the paper or whatever, there's a potential increase mm -hmm. to utility fees. That's why we're out pounding on doors. You and I were in Victoria a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, I guess it's almost a month ago now, but talking to them about everything from the port cap to, you know, whatever, uh, other sources of the Re uh, uh, Resource Benefit Alliance. Mm -hmm. If we can find other sources of revenue, we won't have to use the utility money, right? Absolutely. I mean, my core goal right now is to get the 82, and, 80. that, yeah. and after the 82, yeah. my next goal is to figure out how we can get this down yeah. as little as possible by either new revenues, more grants, uh, more provincial assistance, more federal assistance, yeah. and uh, disaster mitigation funds yeah. and all of that. So yeah. that absolutely, um, we, we want this number to be either as low as possible or nothing right. there at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we've got time to do that. Correct. We just needed to commit to get that. Correct, absolutely. Okay. Uh, is there anything I haven't asked you that you think we need to talk about? Because this has been a long yeah. video. Uh, no, I think that we will, the timelines on this, I think is an important okay. piece that we are, we, we know that this is a significant ask from the federal government and uh, it needs to go through uh, several different um, levels. So it first needs to have uh, the minister uh, sign it off, then it needs to go to Treasury Board if, if approved by the minister to go there. And we believe that this is anywhere between um, 30 to 90 days, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so we are pushing and pushing and pushing uh, to try and get that. Because we can't spend any of this, any of this. Correct until they've given us an answer on this. Correct, we need to show that all of the money is Because if we start spending this, this, this becomes a smaller number, that becomes a smaller number. Correct, yes. Right, so we've got to go for that, which is why, mm -hmm. which is why you're on airplanes quite a bit. <laughs> that's that's yeah, correct, and but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, okay, listen, um, I, I, 
I know it's a long video. I really know that. I don't even know whether they're going to break it up into chunks. But this is what the next three years is going to be all about. It's all about your tax dollars. It's all about the inconvenience that's going to come into your life. Uh, it'll be great when it's all said and done. But when, uh, when they get going and they hit your street, if your street's on the list, and that's the other thing, you might be hoping your street's on the list and it's not, uh, you can look at that map. Uh, but when they hit your street, it's completely torn up. It means you're not gonna be able to get to your driveway. It means we have to figure out ways for ambulances and fire trucks to get to your house. It means there's gonna be an above ground pipe mm -hmm. uh, distributing water that will need to be boiled. Yes, yes, absolutely. Right? Very inconvenient. Yeah, correct. Very inconvenient. And I think that when we know a little bit more and we've, we've sort of yeah. uh, gone through and figured out every, uh, all, all, all of those, um, those things, and we, we should probably do it again and talk about, <laughs> and talk about yeah. what, what that looks like yeah. uh, for just a standard neighborhood, because as, as uh, Mr. Mayor said, it is going to be very inconvenient. And there are some unanswered questions that we're still trying to figure out right, right. now how to facilitate. Right. Yeah. The big the big piece right now that we were waiting on bated breath is eighty two million dollars. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't get that, if for some reason we're turned down, we've made our best case. I know they know how important yes. it is. They call regularly to see whether our water is still mm -hmm. running, right? Yeah. So so they know. But if for some reason we don't get eighty two, we're gonna have to regroup. And figure out what you can do with 120 million dollars mm -hmm. or whatever, and, and and make some decisions then. But that's a, for another video, another day. <laughs> but uh, okay, so with that, I'm, I'm thanks so much. I, I know this matters to you. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you stuck to the end, it must have been helpful to you. Uh, and and uh, we'll we'll try to do something similar to this to keep you updated on what's going on. But thanks for tuning in.